Okay. Can we re restart the recording? So um, every element, as I was stating, has an atomic weight. And that atomic weight slash molar mass has the units of grams per mole. And so a carbon has an atomic mass or, because I'm dealing with just the atom, we generally call it the atomic weight. But you can call it molar mass, that's fine too. It has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. That concept's important here, grams per mole. That means if you weigh out 12.01 grams of carbon, I have one mole, okay? And if I have one mole, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Much like that example I did last week with, with using small, medium, large eggs. If the small eggs for one dozen weighed 100 grams, okay? If it weighed 100 grams per dozen, that means that I have 12 eggs, 100 grams per dozen of small eggs per dozen, meaning 12, okay? Same scenario here. Now, the next question, number four, it said, if you have 5.25 grams of your element, how many moles that is? Now, in uh, the slide, we, we, I showed you a slide where uh, we had a, a flow chart where we have on the left hand side we have grams of material and we had to we had to get to moles which is in the center so we had grams in the far left moles in the middle and uh atoms on the far right and then down in the bottom looks like a shape of a t in that particular slide had volume okay and so we can get from grams to uh number of atoms via moles. We have to get through moles. Now, every atomic weight that or slash molar mass is a ratio, okay? Again, I emphasize the ratio again, which is grams per mole. I can write it as grams per mole or moles per gram. Which way I write it depends on the question. So here the question says, I have 5.25 grams of the element, which I selected carbon, okay? Now I need to get to, and so I write it down, okay? I need to get two moles of carbon. And so I emphasize the fact that you write it out long, longhand so you can see where you're at, where you need to go with respect to the units. The question at the end is, how many moles is that? Okay, if I have 5.25 grams of element, and this is true, this exercise would be true for any chemical reaction we're gonna do. Here we're dealing with the element, but if we had a compound, we would do the same thing, okay? So this is, this is crucial here that you grasp this. And so it says, I have 5.25 grams of carbon, how many moles of carbon does that correspond to? Well, I know that I'm going to need a conversion factor. And what other conversion factor better than the atomic weight of carbon? Because number four slash molar mass atomic weight is 12.01 grams per mole. That is a ratio. I can write it with moles in the numerator or moles in the denominator. Here, I'm going to write it with moles in the numerator. Why would I want to do that? Because the question asks for moles of carbon. And I want my grams of carbon to cancel out. Okay. And so as I set that problem up, you can see that my grams of carbon cancel out, leaving me with the units of moles per moles of carbon, which tells me that I set it up, prop set it up properly. The other aspect, the way I set this up, is something to help you remember. You have grams, I need to go to moles, I divide by the molar mass, okay? I repeat that. I have grams, 
I need to go to moles, I divide by the molar mass, regardless if it's carbon or regardless if it is some big gigantic polymer compound, okay, of which I know what its molar mass is. So if I divide by the molar mass to get to moles, what do you think I need to do if I start with moles and I need to go to grams? I multiply, it's the converse. And if I set that up you, with, with my units, you know that you got it up properly, okay? Now, some of you here in number four added Avogadro's number, but there was no need for that in number four because the question said, how many moles? It's like asking you with the small eggs. If I have 200 grams of small eggs, of which a dozen weighs 100 grams, how many dozen do I have? Okay, that's essentially the question here. All right, now they're asking you if I have five point, number five, if I have 5.25 grams of your element, how many atoms do I need? And going back to that flow chart in the last chapter, you can see that I start with grams, I gotta get to atoms using Avogadro's number, but I need two conversion factors, the molar mass and Avogadro's number to get me to the number of atoms. So basically I'm using everything I used in number four but I'm adding one more factor right because I need to know how many atoms so I'm using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd which is Avogadro's number which is units ions, what have you. In this case, it happens to be atoms. So we can write atoms per one mole carbon. Okay, and so those are the only two factors I need in this calculation. Grams, look at my units, grams of can carbon cancel out, moles of carbon cancel out, leaving me with atoms of, car of carbon. Now this could have been, I just selected carbon, but it could easily have been any other element. Now, the next question, um, they ask, theoretically speaking, if your element was it in the gas state at STP, and they say theoretically because a lot of elements at STP would not be gases, but this was more of an exercise, okay? So if carbon were a gas at STP, how many grams is 2.5 liters of your element? Now, many people did not read the question. They assumed they saw the number 5.25 and thought we're still dealing with 5.25 grams, but that's not the case. It's 5.25 liters that you're given. And they're asking you to figure out, uh, how many grams does 5.25 liters of your element uh, consist of? How much does it weigh? Okay, some people started with 5.25 liters, and I have to admit they used the uh, the ratios and adjusted the ratios to make their units canceled, but it was totally incorrect because you started off with the wrong units to begin with, and so your answer was uh, incorrect. Um, so you ended up with an answer of liters, which is not what the question asked, okay? And so what I'm stating here is, look at your problem, look at it. Did I set this up properly, as you ask yourself? Does it make sense given what I have been given with respect to the problem, okay? Um, this is something, and checking yourself is not just this homework, but this is gonna be true in your professional career. Um, you have to be accurate as possible, as 100%, because that could cost millions of dollars if you're making something, for example, in research and development, or it could be a matter of somebody's life if you are in the health profession, okay? And so do check your work. I mean, don't, don't take it for granted that it looks okay. Double check it. So let's set this up. 
we say we have 5.25 liters of carbon because we're going to assume that carbon is theoretically a gas at STP. Being an STP, noting that again from that flow chart is that we have to go through moles. Okay, so when we are STP, we know that one mole of any gas, any gas, that one mole of it occupies a volume of 24.4 liters. And so that first factor gets rid of liters with respect to the element that I selected and puts me into moles of carbon, okay? Which is where I want to be in moles because from moles now I could get to atoms or I could get to grams. Question says, how many grams does this uh, 5.25 liters weigh? And so that means that I will be using my molar mass of 12.5 zero one grams per mole okay and i set that up properly because now look at your units to make sure things cancel out seven the 5.25 liters liters cancel out with the 22.4 liters the moles cancel out with the the molar mass of carbon leaving me with units of car of carbon okay so now it's a matter of your you're doing the, the mathematics. Nowhere in there, nowhere in number six was Avogadro's number needed to be used, okay? The only place where Avogadro's number was needed was in number, number five, because it asked you how many atoms, okay? And number two, it's asking you, I have one mole of, that, of a, your element. How many atoms does that consist of? And that for everybody should have that answer, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. I have that number, okay? Anyway, any question about this exercise, this activity? Is there something uh, you don't see, don't understand? And maybe I need to go and uh, add, add some more to it. So when I ask for how many atoms in one mole, that's just the 6.02 times 10 and 23 yeah. Yeah. number? Yeah, how, okay. many don't, how many donuts in a dozen? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, So 12. that's just the number for the mole, okay. Yeah, that is a number for a mole, which is the, the quote, the chemist dozen, okay? So it could be a mole of atoms, or it could be a mole of donuts. I <laughs> think that's a lot of donuts, <laughs> okay? It's just a number, just like dozen, okay? Any other questions? Okay. Well, let me well, continue. Let me... Go ahead, somebody's. Oh, that was, that was me. Um, yeah. I was just going over the, uh, the chapter 12 Canvas homework not the activity, but the actual homework. Okay. I did, I did both the temps and I got the same exact grading, got the same exact problems wrong. And okay. I'm not sure if it was just because of the way I rounded on some of them or, yeah, I wasn't really Do you Do you sure. know what, what specific question or is it all? Um, there, was, there was a question eight. Okay, can you tell me what it said? And maybe I can write it um, down. It, it says, what is the mass in grams of 4.621 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H2O? Okay, 4.621 uh, times, times 10, 10 to the 24th. Fourth, let me do the 24th. <laughs> Sorry about that. Molecules of uh, H2O, water? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have that many molecules of water. Now, what is the question? It's asking, uh, what, is, what is the mass in grams? Okay, what, what is I'm, the mass? Okay. All right, and so we need... <laughs> We have this number, okay, this number in molecules 
of water. And so what do we need to get that number into, what is our common factor that we need to get everything to into unit wise? If I go from A to B or X to Y, to get a, what's the relationship they all have in common? That all the, I mean- They all need to get, well, they all need to get the moles first, don't they? Exactly. So we need a conversion factor of Avogadro's number because we're talking about molecules. Okay. So we're going to need 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. And that would be molecules. Oh. All right. So that factor gets us into moles of H2O, okay? Moles of water, I'm just gonna write water. Okay, now when I do the math at this point, I end up with moles of water. Question asked for how, what is that, what is the mass in grams? So what do I need now? You need to find the uh, the molar mass of water. Correct, right? because yes, because I need the molar mass of water. I know oxygen sixteen, two hydrogen, so it's what 18, 18 .02. Check my numbers for me. But again, when you use these numbers, make sure you take the atomic weight of the atoms from our periodic table. I saw some atomic weights with about. 15 digits after the decimal point, which I'm not saying that number is incorrect. What I'm saying is that number using any calculation can propagate the error with respect to the answer that Canvas understands. Okay. And so uh, when you need to use the atomic weights to figure out the molar mass, do use the, the atomic weights of the periodic table for the class. That way there'll be no, no question. All right, so then we have one mole of water, H2O. At this point in time, um, are we not where we need to be? Unit-wise? Well, that should be okay for the setup. My my answer was literally one digit shy, and I'm not sure if I rounded it incorrectly. Okay. Well, the only your your final number, hmm, it could be. I'll have to look at it. But basically, you canvas should have given you a multiple choices. I don't know unless you're like way off, because you're using a whole number, four point six two one, right, and we can't use the atomic weights for sig figs. So you have an infinite number of sig figs here. And so even if you selected four sig figs or three sig figs, every number here is a, is a, is a um, whole number. So if it was wrong, uh, shoot me an email and I'll take a look at it. In fact, I'll look at all of them. Do, do you follow what I'm saying yeah, here, guys? I think I, think, I, think I, I think I rounded it up instead of down. I okay. think that's what I did because that's that was one of the questions that wasn't multiple choice on there. That's one where you actually just had to enter in the the figure okay. without the, I, without the unit. I will look at the sig figs because here there's no sig figs don't play a factor because this. Uh, number, it wasn't the sig figs. So it, it was I I had the right amount of sig figs. It was just that I rounded the number I think incorrectly. Okay. Like All right. Well, ones. Shoot me an email and I'll take a look at it and see what you do. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, no problem. Any other questions? Everybody see here that these type of calculations, which we will continue to do, is uh, you, you, you need to get into uh, the common factor is moles. And so you start with grams of a compound and you need to get to moles. You're essentially, you're taking the molar mass and you're dividing by the molar mass. If you have moles and you want to get to grams, you multiply by the molar mass. If you can't, that does, if that doesn't help you, 
But then remember that the molar mass is a ratio and I can write it with either grams in the numerator or flip it over in grams in the denominator and, and take a look at your units, okay? All right, any other questions? Yeah, all right, so um, we had did, we did finish with chapter, well, slide three, chapter 13, but I wanna go back to it a little bit, start from the beginning. <laughs> to refresh your memory because uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursdays, as you know, will be just study days. And um, those, some of you came on Thursday, and that's good. My four o'clock, 4.15 class, nobody showed up, so I guess they're doing okay. <laughs> Anyway, we talked about this in which, which once we have balanced chemical equations, those coefficients are represent the mole ratio between the reactants, okay? So we have the last equation here. We got nitrogen in the presence of hydrogen to give us ammonia, the last chemical equation. Well, we've been talking about one molecule and three molecules, so on and so forth. Well, take that molecule name now we convert it to moles. What this tells us is that one mole of nitrogen needs three moles of hydrogen to give us two moles of ammonia, okay? Uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a quick question. How many points do you personally have to grade on the exam? I'm uh, just curious. Uh, that I don't know yet. I haven't had a chance to look at, look okay. at it. Uh, but uh, have you taken it already? Yeah, I took the exam already. Okay, so uh, obviously there's some points needing to go there. I don't know. I couldn't answer that, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, no, no worries at all. No worries. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we talked about moles, all right? So the coefficients is what gives us this mole ratio. And this mole ratio is what we talked about the stoichiometry. So it's crucial that one, identify, take from a written word, from words and convert those words into chemical reactions. And then um, from those chemical reactions, from the reactants, be able to identify the products. You know, we talked about six different uh, chemical reactions. Then from that, uh, balance them properly, because once that's, that's done, then we can start doing calculations. Because right now we talk about a mole, but we can do things like, for example, uh, a question could be asked, all right, I need a uh, thousand grams of ammonia, okay? So knowing that I need a thousand grams of ammonia, how many grams, how many grams of nitrogen do I need? Okay, to give me a thousand grams. Or alter alternatively, I could say a question could be asked, well, with a thousand grams of, of hydrogen, okay, uh, how many grams of ammonia would that create? Things, things of that nature. And, Normally, I'm, I'm selecting the reactant, which means that if I have a thousand grams of hydrogen, that infers that I have sufficient amount of nitrogen to react properly. Okay, so we're only concerned about hydrogen and ammonia in that question, or I'm only concerned about ammonia and nitrogen in the, in the first example I gave you. But in order for me to do this, I need a balanced chemical equation. Second of all, now you know, using the molar mass, how to take that thousand grams and convert it into moles using the molar mass of ammonia. Once I know the molar mass of ammonia, I know the stoichiometric relationship, it can get me two moles of nitrogen, okay? Again, the common factor to get from nitrogen to hydrogen or from nitrogen to ammonia is moles. I need to get everything into moles. That's the only way I can, I can, um, to get it, everything to correlate so I can do some calculations, okay. All right, so that we talked about uh, the ratio between the reactants, okay. And so uh, we, you can write in one of two ways. We have iron three oxide and carbon monoxide. That ratio is one to three. 
So I can write it in the first example there, given to you. I can write it in that format right here. And obviously, in, I would write it in that format if the question was asking uh, how many grams or moles of iron three oxide I need. Okay, because that is iron three oxide is in the numerator. If the question asks, well, how many, you know, how much carbon monoxide I need, well, then I will use this, the, this relationship because carbon monoxide is in the numerator. Okay. All right. My little assistant down here is watching me <laughs> as I talk to you guys and she's laughing. All right. So we talked about these. And the first question is how many moles of iron can be formed from 10.2 moles of carbon monoxide? Okay, and so we use that relationship of a two to three relationship between uh, carbon monoxide and iron. And so when the question, let me clear this up a little bit first. When the question is asking you here, how many moles of iron can be formed from 10.2 moles of carbon monoxide. And so we're only concerned is the iron and the carbon monoxide, okay? That's our only concern with respect to the calculation. What's happening with iron uh, three oxide and what's happening with iron with carbon dioxide, doesn't make it doesn't make a matter because that's not what we're concerned with with respect to the question, okay? And so our ratio there is two to three. Notice how it's set up with carbon monoxide in the denominator. Why? Because we're looking for moles of iron. And so we have 10.2 moles of carbon monoxide. Uh, I need or will make 6.8 moles of iron. And notice here, we got into moles of iron. We went from moles of carbon monoxide and related it to moles of iron, okay? But in order to do that, we needed to go through moles of iron and moles of carbon monoxide. Notice that the, the, the common factor here is moles because now you know how to get from moles to grams because in the, in the real world, we're not measuring or weighing out moles, we're weighing out grams because their balance doesn't weigh out in moles, it weighs out in grams. So with 6.8 moles of iron, knowing the molar mass of iron, okay, which off the top of my head is 55.85 grams per mole. Not off the top of my head, I cheated, I looked up my periodic table, 55, I knew it was around 56. 55.85 grams per mole. Now multiplying 6.8 moles of iron with the molar mass of, of iron gives me the actual number of grams that I would need. But more on that later on, because right now we're just relating things with respect to moles. Okay. Um, the next question says, how many moles of iron three oxide are needed to form 17 moles of carbon dioxide. And so we're concerned only about carbon dioxide and iron three oxide in that relationship, which is a one to three. And if I start off with, if um, I have, I want to make 17 moles of carbon dioxide, the question is, well, how many moles of iron three oxide do I need, okay? So here's an example of, of, of a product, carbon dioxide, wanting to make 17 moles. How much iron three oxide do I have? Which is understood that we have sufficient carbon monoxide to do this reaction. Okay, so our relationship is a one to three. That's the only uh, concern we have. It's just carbon dioxide and iron three oxide. So we can set that up and uh, 17 moles carbon dioxide divided by three. So we're getting about 5.7 moles of iron three oxide. Notice that ratio is set up properly. So CO2 cancels out when we do the math, okay? And now again, 
you have 5.7 moles. You related moles of carbon dioxide with moles of iron-3 oxide. Now, I can get from moles of iron-3 oxide to grams of iron-3 oxide using the molar mass. Now, think about this. If you were starting off with grams of carbon dioxide, well, I would first need to take grams of carbon dioxide and convert it to moles, okay? To get me to 17 moles, whatever number of grams I need, okay? And then that ratio one to three would get me two moles of iron three oxide, 5.37, which used, then using the molar mass of iron three oxide gets me two grams, okay? So that's how I got to, I can get from grams of carbon dioxide to grams of iron three oxide through moles, okay, through moles and the molar mass and the stoichiometric relationship between the reactants on the chemical reaction, in the chemical reaction, okay. So we can balance this reaction by adding a, a two in front of S, a sulfur dioxide and a two in front of a sulfur trioxide, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so the question is how many moles of sulfur trioxide will form if 0.165 moles of oxygen are reacting? And so in this, you know, here's here's the, the crucial part here is based on the question, our only concern is the sulfur trioxide and the oxygen, okay? That's all we're concerned about based on the question. And we we have a balance, so it's a one to two relationship with respect to oxygen to sulfur trioxide. All right. Um, so we set that up. 0.165 moles of oxygen. It's a two to one ratio. Notice that my oxygen cancels out, leaving me with 0.33 zero moles of sulfur trioxide. And so if I start off with 0.165 moles of oxygen, and assuming I have sufficient sulfur dioxide, okay, I would make 0.33 moles of sulfur trioxide. Now, I can go from the moles of sulfur trioxide to grams, okay? Because I just need the molar mass of sulfur trioxide. And remember the molar mass you add up the atomic weights of all the atoms. So I got three oxygens and one sulfur, add those all, all up, you get the molar mass for sulfur trioxide. <laughs> um, this one here, let me clear one, next one says, how many moles of sulfur dioxide are needed to make 0 0.042 moles of sulfur trioxide? And so we're only concerned about is sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide, oh, okay? That's the only oxygen, we assume it's sufficient amount, okay? And normally what happens in the real world, we keep oxygen at, at uh, excess, so we know we have sufficient oxygen for this process to occur. And so notice that the ratio is a two to two, or basically one to one, okay? Because in that ratio, two to two, those twos cancel out, do they not? Yeah. And so when we set that up, you can see uh, in their conversion factor that two, two moles and two moles cancel out to give us one. And so if I start off with 0 0.042 moles of sulfur trioxide, or if that's what I need, then I need the same number of sulfur tri uh, dioxide, 0 0.042, because the mole ratio in the stoichiometric relationship is a one to one or a two to two. It could have been three to three, could have been four to four, the same thing, right? One to one. All right. All right, so here's another, another flow chart, okay? That when we're dealing with mass uh, uh, stoichiometry, going for, we want, grams and we want to get to grams start off with grams to get to grams what we go through is moles can i get from 
from grams given. Grams given is what the problem is giving you. What is what is known to what grams find? That means what I'm looking for. You know what is what I want to calculate for. Could be a product. Could be a reactant. Depends on the question. But I cannot do any of that, any type of relationship, unless I go through moles. So to do that, I need the molar mass of what I'm given and the molar mass of what I'm trying to find. Okay? I need the molar mass of my reactant and the molar mass of the product, or it could be another reactant, but I need molar mass because molar mass is the units, grams per mole. I also need from the balanced chemical equation, the stoichiometric relationship, and that is the mole ratio between the two uh, moieties that I'm trying to calculate, one or the other. So what is their relationship based on the balanced chemical equation? And that's why it's crucial that you have a correct balanced chemical equation, otherwise that mole ratio will be incorrect and therefore your calculation will be incorrect, okay? But doing all that, you cannot get from, can I get from A to B or from B back to A without getting through moles, okay? And that is the common factor for all of the reactants, getting through moles. All right, so we have this reaction here where we have iron two oxide in the presence of aluminum. Reacts to give us iron and aluminum oxide. Can anybody tell me what type of reaction that is? It's a single replacement, right? That's correct, single replacement. The iron, the aluminum replaced the iron in, in the iron oxide. Okay. And so here you ask the question, calculate the mass of iron two oxide needed to react completely with 5.5 grams of aluminum. And so in this case, we're just looking at the reactants. Okay, if you weigh out 5.55 grams of aluminum, okay, the, the question we need to determine is, well, how much iron two oxide do I need to also weigh out to make sure that all the aluminum is reacted? And we do that in the lab all the time. We start off with, we can start off an arbitrary, arbitrary amount if you want, or whatever you have, you may have limited amount, you weigh it, <clears throat> and then you have the balance chemical equation, you can calculate how much of the other reactant you need to make sure that they react with the appropriate amounts to give us the appropriate products. All right, so hopefully I, everybody can see that here, is that you're starting out from 5.5 grams of aluminum, how much aluminum ox uh, iron oxide do I need for this reaction to, re to react completely, okay? Then the second question they're asking you here, and I'll put it in a different color. Uh, let's do that. As you calculate the mass of aluminum oxide produced, okay, when you start, you react 10.25 grams of aluminum. So they're asking you about how much of this you're going to make of aluminum oxide if you started off with 10.25 grams of aluminum, okay? And we assume that the iron two oxide is sufficient quantity. But that's okay. We're not. We're only concerned about about what's in the pink color between those two uh, reactants here and products. And then for the first question, we're only concerned about what what is in the red box. 
Okay. All right. So let's clear this up and we'll go through the. All right, so we have the first one. We have 5.5 grams of aluminum, okay? And so we're in grams, so we need to uh, convert the grams of aluminum into moles of aluminum, and therefore we need the molar mass. So you go to periodic table, it's 26.98 grams per mole. Notice that I have 26.98 grams in the denominator, okay? Because I want those to cancel out. Okay, notice that my grams cancel out. Grams of aluminum cancel out. Ah. So at this point in time, if you did the math, the calculation, you end up with moles of aluminum. Okay, but we need one more factor because the question asks, we need to uh, know how many grams of iron to oxide we need, okay? And so from the balance chemical equation, our ratio between the iron to oxide and the aluminum is a three to two. And I write it with aluminum in a denominator again, because I'm looking for iron three oxide. So that's gonna be in the numerator, okay? Now, at this point, with respect to the mathematics, I am in moles of iron two oxide. So I'm away from aluminum now, and I'm into iron two oxide. But the question was, oh, how many grams does that consist? Of? And so I need to go one more step. And that is the molar mass of the iron two oxide. Because the, the molar mass of one iron, one oxygen gives us 71.85 grams per uh, mole. You can see again that my iron three oxide now, moles, cancel out, leaving me with grams of iron two oxide, which is what the question asked. So let me clear this up a little bit. And so that mathematics, all that tells me that if you weigh out 5.55 grams of aluminum, you go out to the balance, weigh 5.55 grams of aluminum, then you also need to weigh out 22.2 grams of iron two oxide to get this to react completely, okay? Uh, the other uh, question was between uh, aluminum oxide and aluminum, okay? And so we have 10.25 grams of aluminum. We need to convert that to moles of aluminum using the molar mass or the atomic weight of aluminum like we did in step one, okay? And now we're going to moles of aluminum oxide. So from the stoichiometric relationship, it's a one to two ratio. Okay, so, so at this point, mathematically, we will be in moles of aluminum oxide. So th think about this for a second. We started off with grant, we were in units of grams per aluminum. We went to moles of aluminum. Now we're in moles of aluminum oxide. Now, once we got that, using one more factor, which is the molar mass of aluminum oxide, which is two aluminum, three oxygens. That's 101.96 grams per mole. Now at this point, I'm able to calculate how much aluminum oxide I would make if I started off with 10.25 grams of aluminum. Okay, almost 20, 20 grams with 28.37. Okay, go back and check your Units, make sure that it's been set up properly. My grams of aluminum cancel, good there. My moles of aluminum cancel out, we're good there. Moles of aluminum oxide cancel out, leaving me with units of aluminum oxide. 
just like we did with respect to the method of converting units back in that chapter when we were metric units and English units and we're setting up conversion factors. And I said, use this ratio. All those conversion factors are ratios. Set them up in this manner because here we are, we're here, okay? There's a chemical reaction. We have at least three conversion factors to get us from moles or grams of aluminum to grams of aluminum oxide. And the only way to get from A to B is through moles, okay? So grams, I need, to, I need the molar mass from grams to get me into moles. And then the stoichiometric relationship from the balance of the equation gives me, gets me into moles of the other reactant and or product, which then from there, using its molar mass, gets me to grams of the other material or product. <laughs> All right, let me clear this up here a second. All right, so here's a, we, we did a, a, a flow chart with respect to what we talked about earlier in STP. And I expanded it now because we were able now to, to um, incorporate chemical reactions, okay? So for point number one, down the bottom left-hand corner and the right-hand corner in yellow, that is only true, I emphasize the fact, the fact, if you are at STP, zero degrees and, and um, uh, one atmosphere, excuse me, I had a senior moment there. <laughs> okay, one atmosphere. So that is only true. But the point is that if I'm given bottom left, uh, upper left hand corner in the green, I can go all the way to the right corner, bottom right corner, okay, in yellow, if I'm at SDP. But I can't do any of that without going through moles. Without going through moles, you know, here we go. Moles right here. Moles right here, and definitely we need the mole ratio because we're talking about chemical reactions here, okay? So moles is the key factor to be able to get into moles so we can go from point A to point B, and once we're in moles, going back to grams using the molar mass. And so you can see here that, um, let me make sure I get there. To get from grams to the yellow, okay, and vice versa. This this is not this is not a one way street here. Let me clear this up here real quick. Okay, so to get from there to there, or uh, from there to there, or I can get from there to there or even from there to there, <laughs> and I, I, here we go again, you know, from there. So I made a double arrow here. You can get from every point on this uh, flow chart, but to get from every point, you gotta go through moles, okay? So the moles is very crucial. Right? Now, don't mistake the arrow that I wrote that directly. In order to go from green to green, I can't go directly. I got to go through the moles given, mole ratio, find the moles and the molar mass, okay? So this, this low chart, I would uh, you utilize this quite a bit to help you with respect to these type of calcula calculations. Okay, because typically you could be given a, a reaction that, again, it's written out, and it says, write and balance the, the reaction of hydrochloric acid and uh, solid cobalt. And they're telling you, no, cobalt will be in the plus two as an ion in this example. Okay, and so um, we can look at the series activity series 
and compare cobalt versus hydrogen, you can see that cobalt is a lot more reactive. And therefore, uh, since cobalt is an elemental form, a reaction proceeds, we're going to create hydrogen and cobalt chloride. So that's the reaction. Okay, so we have hydrochloric acid in the presence of cobalt metal to give us cobalt chloride. And that's why they told you uh, cobalt plus two, because cobalt is one of the elements that have a, a variable oxidation number. So you have to be told that. And then hydrogen is the other product. All right. Now, now they're asking you a question. It says, well, how many liters of gas at STP will form if five grams of cobalt reacts? Okay. Well, what we're concerned about here is only two. Well, they said, how many liters of gas? Well, they we're dealing with H2. Okay, because the other one is not gas, it's an aqueous solution of cobalt two chloride. And we're dealing with cobalt. Okay, so we're dealing specifically with five grams of cobalt and need to figure out how many liters of gas will form at STP. All right, keeping in mind the table, the flow chart right here. You're given grams in the far left corner, all right? And you're looking for volume of gas form in the far right corner. So you're going from the far left corner to the bottom right corner, okay? And you have to go through molar mass to give you moles given, and then from there you go through mole ratio to find the moles you're looking for, and then using the, the uh, STP uh, relationship of one mole of gas is equal to 22.4 liters. Okay. And so we start off with what we're given, 5.00 grams of cobalt. Okay. We need to convert that cobalt to moles. So we need the molar mass of cobalt, which we get from the periodic table, 58.93 grams of cobalt, okay? Now, from the balanced chemical equation, we see the ratio of one hydrogen per one cobalt. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. And so at this point, we went from grams of cobalt now, if we do the mathematics, we will be in moles of hydrogen gas, okay? Moles of hydrogen gas. But the question asks, how many liters of gas? And we are at STP. So therefore, being at STP and being at this point, we are moles of hydrogen, we can simply use a 22.4 liter per mole relationship because that would tell us how many liters of gas we would have for that number moles of hydrogen gas, okay? So check my units, everything looks like it's canceling out. We end up with liters of hydrogen gas. So I end up with uh, 1.90 liters of hydrogen, okay? And so if you were at zero degrees in one atmosphere and you took some hydrochloric acid, and you added five grams of hydrogen, of, excuse me, of cobalt, you would generate almost two liters of hydrogen gas, 1.90 liters of gas, okay? Now we could have calculated um, how many grams of hydrogen gas that would be by replacing the last conversion factor with the molar mass of hydrogen gas, right? 2.02 .02 grams per mole. That would have given us how many grams it will actually weigh. All right, so. Now, <clears throat> if 2.374 liters of hydrogen gas are formed, 
how many grams of hydrochloric acid reacted at STP? Okay, so mark down, you know, to go, you know, look at your reaction and look at the question. So they're saying the hydrogen gas is formed. So we're talking about this and they want to know how much HCl, okay? And so by marking the, the two components that I'm trying to calculate from, I don't worry about the cobalt, nor do I worry about the cobalt chloride. They're not even involved in the question. My only concern is the hydrogen and the hydrochloric acid, okay? And so the, the first part says, if 2.374 liters of hydrogen gas is formed, well, how many grams of hydrochloric acid reacted? So somehow they were able to know the volume of H2 gas form. So they want you to back calculate and figure out, well, how much of the hydrochloric acid reacted to give me that amount of hydrogen gas? And that's essentially what, what they're doing. So we write down what we're given, okay? 2.374 liters of hydrogen gas, okay? We gotta get two moles all the time, gotta get two moles. And since we're at STP, I can use the 22.4 liter per mole relationship with liters in the denominator because I'm gonna cancel those liters out. So at this point, I am in moles of hydrogen gas. Well, I want to get two moles of HCl. And I use this stoichiometric relationship from the balanced chemical equation that there are two moles of hydrogen hydrochloric acid per one mole of hydrogen gas. It's a two to one ra uh, ratio, stoichiometric relationship. Okay. So at this point, I am, with respect to units and everything else cancels. I have moles of HCl, moles of hydrochloric acid, but they want to know how many grams that consists of. So I need the molar mass, <laughs> excuse me, of hydrochloric acid. Well, I tally that up, one chloride, one hydrogen, that gives me 36.46 grams of hydrochloric acid per mole of hydrochloric acid. And so now I go back, check my units, you know, it's crucial making sure things didn't get messed up here. So my liters cancel, moles of hydrogen gas are canceling out, moles of HCl cancel out, leaving me with grams of hydrochloric acid, which is what the question asked for, okay? And so now, since everything's set up properly, the math is on you, plug in the numbers, you should end up with 7.72 grams of hydrochloric acid, keeping in mind that the 22.4 liter per mole, that could be a factor in sig figs, and it is here, and that's why you have three sig figs as an answer, because of the 22.4. You start out with 2.374, which is four sig figs, four sig figs. All right, let's, let's do this. A um, couple more, and we'll, we'll be done with this chapter. It's fairly short. Four, the next chapter is going to take a little time. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on next Tuesday and the following Tuesday to do the IMF, and then the last Tuesday before the exam, finish with chapter 15. All right, hydrochloric acid gas plus oxygen produce chlorine gas and water vapor. And so now they're taking a reaction in words and want you to convert it into a chemical reaction, right? To form the reaction. So they're saying HCl gas plus oxygen gas. Keep in mind that oxygen is one of the diatomics because they're saying oxygen gas. They didn't say oxygen. If it would have said oxygen, then they're talking about just a single element. It's oxygen gas produces, again, chlorine gas, keeping in mind that chlorine is diatomic, okay? So we have Cl2 and water vapor, okay? So water being H2O 
and vapor telling you it's a gas, okay? Uh, once you have that reaction written out, they ask you how many liters of chlorine can be formed if three liters of oxygen react completely at STP? Okay, well, we got to write the reaction. Okay, so HCl plus oxygen gives us chlorine gas plus H2O. Uh, we got to balance everything. We end up with four hydrochloric acid per one oxygen to produce two moles of chlorine gas plus two moles of water, okay? So going back to the question, it says take three liters of oxygen, okay? Can be formed. Uh, if um, they wanna know how many liters of chlorine can be formed. So oxygen and chlorine have a one to two relationship. All right, but we're in moles of oxygen and therefore, and we are at STP, so we can use a 22.4 liter per mole relationship, okay? Then from the balance chemical equation is two moles per uh, one mole of oxygen, which at this point gives us moles of chlorine, okay? And, <clears throat> The next, uh, since we're still in HC, uh, we're still in um, STP, we can continue to use a 22.4 liter per mole, okay? Which tells us we have, we, we, um, we will need, we will make um, six liters of chlorine. Now, can anybody see a trend here? Is there any way we can simplify this reaction if we are under certain conditions? Uh, you know, we're at SDP, that's the first condition, obviously. But what are the other, what is the other condition? Can we simplify this last reaction mathematically? Uh, would you be able to just eliminate the first and third steps since they cancel each other out? Yeah, exactly. And the only and the only way and let me restate let me, rest, let me state this carefully because sometimes things get out of context. Okay, one in order only when you are at STP, okay, and the two reactants you're dealing with are gas. We're dealing with chlorine gas and oxygen gas. You can see that yes, normally we need that conversion factor, all right? But, uh, and normally we just need one of them. <laughs> but here, we, we're using both of them and they just cancel out. They literally just cancel out. So when you're dealing with two gases, all you need is a stoichiometric relationship, which is in this case two to one. And in this particular reaction, it, all of the products are gases. So you can use just the stoichiometric relationship for any of the combination of the other reactants. HCl and oxygen, uh, you can eliminate the 22.4 liter or uh, going between HCl and chlorine, HCl and water, you know, because everybody's in the gas phase and everybody's at STP. And then only in, under those conditions can you simply simplify this reaction. You just use a stoichiometric relationship between the two to get to the product that you want, okay? Or the number that you're looking for, right? Can everybody see that, hopefully? All right, that's good. And let us continue because we're pretty close to ending on that. Try these at home. Uh, we can, you know, if there's a problem with it, bring it in on Thursday. But carbon reacts with oxygen gas to form carbon monoxide. How many liters of carbon monoxide at STP can be made from, first one, uh, 15 grams of carbon. And then the second uh, question is same 
same part, how many, you know, carbon reacts with oxygen, blah, blah, blah. And to ask you, how many liters of carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide STP can be made from 20 liters of oxygen gas? Okay. Try those at home. And you should get 22 liters of carbon monoxide and 40.7 liters of carbon monoxide in the second one. So anyway, uh, try those at home. Overview. Uh, uh, calculations. I'm getting a phone call, so I'm going to have to wait. Elements and compounds, okay? Ionic versus covalent compounds. That's crucial, okay? Balance your uh, chemical reactions, okay? When you make the compounds, okay? So, in other words, make sure that you're uh, naming the compounds correctly because let me state this carefully because you know if ionic if it's ionic compounds you get a and they give you a name and then break those compounds into elements ions I should say then put them together uh, if they're covalent compounds you know decipher the name they're giving you so you can put those compounds together to write the formula Okay, and make sure you put them together in the right ratio. And then from the balanced reactions, look at the uh, stoichiometric ratios between reactants and products, or between products in themselves, or reactants in themselves, or like I said, reactants and products. Okay, um, in terms of uh, that relationship you can you're able to go using that flow chart you can go from products to reactants or reactants to products in multiple directions but you have to go through moles okay also keep in mind uh if you're at stp which they may tell you you're at stp or they just simply mention zero degrees and and uh, one atmosphere then you can use that relationship of 22.4 liters per mole for a gas, okay? So that flow chart says it all right there. If, if uh, you got this down pat, you should not have a problem with respect to going from upper left corner to bottom left corner or going from left upper left corner to top right corner or down to the bottom right corner. Okay, and keep it in mind again for the yellows, the bottom corners, only at STP. All right, so that flow chart is the, is the best thing. So with that being said, congratulations, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have finished chapter 13. So we will continue with uh, next uh, Tuesday with 14. Okay, and like I said, that's probably going to be like a two-day thing. And then the following week, we'll be finishing up with Chapter 15 because that's pretty short. And then uh, that will get you ready for exam number five. Um, other than that, let me... Um,